And here's our start to our Unit 7, Systems of Linear Equations. So in this unit, we're going to be looking at creating a, a system of equations and learning different ways in which we can solve them. So we're going to start off by learning on how to create these systems. So a system of linear equations are two equations that have the same two variables and are related to the same information. So essentially here we're now going at how are one situation that we can make two equations of. They'll have the same variables and they'll be talking about the same information in slightly different ways. These are often referred to as a linear system. The solution to a linear system is the pair of values, so it's the x and the y value that satisfies both equations. So you have two equations. There's going to be one value for x and one value for y that are going to actually solve both equations. So what is that value for x and what is that value for y? So let's look at an example here. A total of 78 seats for a concert were sold. They produce a total revenue of $483. So if you sell these 78 seats, you get $783. The seats cost either $250 for the upper deck or $1050 for the lower bowl. So you've got the cheap seats and you've got the expensive seats. From this information, we're gonna have to determine an equation, two equations actually, and then see if we can actually solve these. So before we start solving, we have to make equations. Let's start by identifying your unknown, your variables. So you gotta ask yourself, what in my equation can change? So what ideas can change value? So we have a total of 78 seats. Some are from the upper deck, some are from the lower deck. So 78 seats, that can't change. That's how many we've sold. The amount we sell them for, 43, well that can't change either. And the cost of each seat can't change. But what can change is the number of seats. We don't know of this 78 how many were upper deck and we don't know how many were lower bowl. So my first variable is the number of upper deck seats. And my second variable, we'll always have two, because we need to have two variables, is the number of lower bowl seats. So I know I've sold some upper deck, and I know I've sold some lower bowl, I know I've sold 78 seats, but I don't know how many of each I can do. Now what you're going to want to do is change these ideas into a single letter. So what letter reminds you of the number upper deck? I'm going to say U. And what letter reminds you of the number of lower bowl? Well, I'm going to say L for lower bowl. Now I want to make sure I understand exactly what else do I know. Well, I know that there's a total of 78 seats. So essentially, I'm going to go through there and make sure I write down that I recognize everything that is in my question that I know. Total sales, or total revenue, is $483. The upper deck seats, well they're $250. And the lower bowl seats, well they're $1050. 
Now again, for this stage here, you can pick all the information out of the question, no problem. But I like doing this when I first start, start off because it kind of reminds me, do I have all the information? Am I missing anything? It gets my thought process down. As you get better at this, as you proceed, perhaps you write down less things in this section. So I know my variables are the number of upper deck tickets, number of lower deck tickets. I know I have to have 78 seats. I know my revenue is 43. I know the cost of the upper deck and the lower bowl. So now let's try to get this into an equation. And we're going to have to create two of them here. So how can I make two ideas here? Well, I'm going to highlight these three things for a second. Do you notice they're all dealing with money? Well, they're probably related to some way. And this one all by itself, this one is simply a total number. It's a number, 78 seats. So I'm going to think that I'm going to somehow try to create an equation with my total number of seats. And the second equation will be something with my total dollars. So let's go with my number, my 78 seats. Well, how would I make an equation here? An equation has to have an equal sign. That's a foregone conclusion. So if you think, I'm going to get a total of 78 seats. Well, how do I get those seats? Well, I add my upper deck and my lower bowl. So the number of lower bowl seats plus the number of upper deck seats, U plus L, has to equal 78. And there's no getting around that. I've sold 78. They come from the upper deck and the lower bowl. Add them together. And there we go. Equation 1 is created. Now equation 2, dealing with money. Again, I've got to have an equal sign. So when I sell all these seats, I'm going to sell $483. So that goes on the right. Well, how do I get that? Well, every upper deck seat that I sell costs me $250. That's a multiplication. So 250 times U plus my 1050 times L. If I'm having confusion, whether that's an L or a 1, perhaps I can put them in brackets. So for every upper deck seat, I'm going to make 250. For every lower bowl seat, I'm going to make 1050. When I add these two sections together, I should get $483. So I've made my two equations. And that's really what we're looking at for this lesson. Can you identify your variables? Do you know what information is being presented? And can you now create two equations? So let's go to a nice additional step here. Tim believes that there are 42 upper deck and 36 lower bowl seats. Verify he is correct. So essentially what you got to do is put these numbers into both of your equations and see if they both work. So my first equation was u plus l equals 78. So Tim says that there were 42 upper deck and 36 lower bowl. Now you could write down equals 78 and keep going like that, but it uh, confuses me a little bit. So what I like to do is I like to take the left side of the equal sign and run it down, work it out until I'm down to a single number. What is 42 plus 36? Well, that's 78. I'm down to a single number now. I'm going to draw an arrow to my right hand side because it's all by itself and I get 78. Does 78 equal 78? Yes it does. 
So for my first equation, Tim could be right. But if we only had one equation, well then I could have multiple solutions. I could have had upper deck being 1 and lower deck being 77. That also would have worked. I could have had 10 and 68. There's a whole bunch of situations that would work for one equation. So that's why I have to work into my second equation to see if these numbers are correct. And if they work in my second equation, then these are the only numbers that satisfy the situation. So let's take a look. I've got 250 times u plus 1050 times l, and that's going to equal 483. So my upper deck was 42, so I'm going to substitute in 250 times 42 plus 1050 times my lower bowl, which was 36. And I'm going to run this entire side of the equation down until I get a single number. So I go to my calculator and I go 250 times 42. A little mental math, uh, 105 plus 1050 times 36. That's 378. 105 and 378 is 483. My other side of the equation was right by itself, so I'm going to bring that down. And I got 483. Do those work? Those are equal, so yes. So Tim is correct here because his choice of 42 and 36 work on both sides. Just going to make the quick point here. What if he had said 1 and 77? So if he had said this, then we could have had 1 plus 77, which is 78. And that, of course, would equal 78. That would be a good check. But on the other side, I'd have 250 times 1 plus 1050 times 77. So that would be 250 plus 1050 times 77 is 808. 50, which would equal 100 or 900 or 800 and 11 dollars, and that would not equal 483. So you can see here the only ones that satisfy both equations are 42 and 36. Let's go to our textbook, and again, this is all about identifying variables, what do you know, making your equations. Page 401, let's go two from the A's, five from the B's, one from the C's.